and that brings us to Silent Hill 3. Now this is the first, and as far as I understand, thus far the only Silent Hill game to star a female character. I personally have absolutely no problem with that, as she is a strong character and not a damsel in distress. She isn't the first strong female character in these games. Now, what is potentially bothersome is the fact that she is, indeed, a teenager. Very much a teenager. This comes through in some of her descriptions of stuff, her vocabulary. With that said, it really is the only negative to the lead being a teenage girl, and her character has personality, and she's not obnoxious either. In this one, you revisit a couple of areas from the second game, but they do new things with it. This is the first one to not have any CGI in the cutscenes, and I really didn't miss them. The graphics are so good and the engine so versatile that all the in-engine cutscenes really accomplish it with no problems. Now, in this one, the lead does have a tendency to look at almost anything you can interact with. In the first two, the protagonist's head would turn towards things that they could pick up. In this one, it's also doors and places where you have to use stuff, and you at least have to get used to it. The system for solving puzzles is improved, I think, but this also has maybe the easiest puzzles out of the four. It's either this one or the fourth one, The Room. The voice acting is really good. Some of it may even be the best of the series. The story is great yet again, and it's another very worthy entry in the series. And that brings us to Silent Hill 4, The Room, where 2 and 3 kind of fixed and altered things from earlier on in the franchise. This one, this one goes completely outside of the box. Henry Townshend wakes up one morning and Henry Townshend wakes up one morning and cannot leave his room. His door is locked in chains and padlocks. He can't get his windows open and he keeps having the same nightmare. You playing as someone who's trapped in a room means that there's this certain voyeurism in the game and it's really, really effective. And the game does an excellent job of making you feel like you are trapped in a room. Now, this one being so different from the first three, and indeed, most other games, I've never seen anything that I can completely compare to Silent Hill 4 The Room, makes it a bit of an experiment, and unfortunately, not an entirely successful one at that. There is still a really strong atmosphere, and the audio is still almost invariably excellent. This one does away with the radio and the breast pocket flashlight. That does mean that there aren't really any pitch black, gloomy areas to explore. This still has some really terrifying and creepy locations, but the enemies, I don't know, they don't feel quite as grotesque. I mean, most of them are bizarre, but some of them are the goofy kind of bizarre, where you're not really scared by what you're looking at, you're just weirded out. In this one, you draw the map as you go along, and I think that's a really good way to do it. I didn't personally really miss that feature in the others, which is not to say that there weren't points where I really, at the time, wished I had a map. It does mean that I wouldn't have preferred to have had a map at those points. I'm glad that I didn't get to know exactly. But it does work really well in this one with you drawing the map as you go along. And he still draws in when you can't go in a certain direction. Although, I'm not sure he really differentiates between locked and the lock is broken. So sometimes you'll be going back to a door that you'll never be able to open thinking, Ah, but I've got a key now. Maybe this is the door that I couldn't open before. I would maybe also say that the enemies in this are maybe more frustrating than challenging. They're just annoying, really, in this one. This one does away with the inventory, and I'm thrilled, because that means that you don't have to pause the game and go into this menu and slowly cycle through all your items or all your weapons. You now do it in-game, you know? You can be cycling through them as you're walking, and that makes testing out an object on various things m go much faster. This is also the first of them to have a limited inventory, meaning you can't carry everything 
at once. So you have to choose what to bring and make sure that you have room left to pick stuff up and such. And there is of course a place where you can drop off stuff. Now this one has some areas where you're in the first person perspective instead of the third person perspective. I don't see anything particularly wrong with them. It's well programmed and you now have completely free control of the camera. It can turn it 360 degrees, I believe. And it doesn't detract from the overall atmosphere, I would say. Now, on the other hand, in the third person perspective, the controls have been changed. In the first three, you turn on right and left directional key and, you know, walk forwards or backwards on the corresponding keys. I think you can maybe also strafe in two or three or something. I didn't personally use it. I don't have a problem with having to turn the character like that. It may take a little getting used to, but once you're over that hump, you're fine. In this one, you basically move in the direction that the key you're pressing is pointing. That has been seen before. Hitman Blood Money does the same thing. Only Hitman Blood Money also allows you complete control of the camera. It never suddenly forces you to look in a different direction, making you walk in the wrong direction because you were already pressing the key that two seconds ago led you in the right direction. This one does. The camera will change and suddenly you'll be running straight at a monster instead of straight away from it, or just in general in the wrong direction. And this is not a game where you can get away with accidentally running in the wrong direction. And as far as I've been able to tell, you can't adjust it either, so you can't somehow make the game not do that. The story is really, really good. I'll admit that it might not be the most original, but on the other hand, can you think of any other game that has this plot? Yes, there have been a bunch of novels and a couple of movies that have the main character trapped in a room, but I do think that this is the first time it appears in this medium, and I would also just like to point out, it's a really good handling of that story. The execution is excellent. I mean, as long as you're not just rehashing something that's been done before, as long as you have somewhere to go with it, I don't see a problem with doing a story that has been done before. And I would say that this one fits the bill. One thing that I also think is a bit of a problem is that there are simply too many characters, and very few of them, if any, really get fleshed out. So you don't really get to care about them. And sadly, this includes our protagonist, Henry Townshend, who I could not name two distinguishing qualities about. He seems to have no personality whatsoever, which may help to explain why the actor has such a flat, monotone voice. I mean, he may not have known how to portray this guy. Or he could be a lousy actor, I don't know. But that also does hurt this, the fact that there really aren't any characters that we can really get into. I'll admit that Harry Mason may not have been the most fleshed out character ever, but he certainly wasn't this wooden cardboard cutout guy. Much like in the third one, the puzzles are very easy, and this one also doesn't really seem to have much of any boss fights. Like the third one, this also doesn't have any CGI in the cutscenes, and this time around I think it would have helped. At least in a couple of certain scenes, I would say. But yeah, all in all, not perfect but still really, really good. I mean, yes, I'd say that this is the least good of the four, but that's like reaching into a bag of diamonds and saying, hey, this one's slightly smaller than the rest of them. It's still really, really good, and I do honestly recommend it. And let's face it, if they just stick with the exact same thing over and over, eventually it's gonna get tiresome. It's still creepy, it's still disturbing, the essence is still there, it's just a slightly different flavor.